the Luck Show. I'm Olivia Wayne, and joining me on the sofa today are Heather Steele, Laura Black, and Georgina Blasky. Welcome, ladies. Now, later, the team and I are going to be sharing our favourite fish recipes, so stay tuned for that. Plus, I'm going to be joined by skincare expert Dr. Sam Bunting. She's going to be explaining how to layer all your skincare products. If you've ever been confused by which comes first, your hyaluronic acid or your moisturiser, then stay tuned for that. But first, we've got Love Island on the brain for a change. Oh, did you watch it this week? Slash the last two nights. It's just too good. It's yeah, too it's good. So, such good television. But shocking. I mean, there's yeah, some real is, issues we need to discuss. Why here. is it all like happening now in the last week? As I know well. they're it's such all fools. Very strange. This is also the time to just stick with who you got. Exactly. Exactly. He made a rookie error, didn't he? Oh, he so schoolboy. We're talking about Jordan, who. Basically, is the second person to be accused of gaslighting, by the way, something we need to talk about, it's a real thing. But um, he asked Anna to be his girlfriend, and two days later, basically told India he was interested in her. But then, when Anna caught on, he blamed Anna, blaming on her behaviour and how she is, yeah. that that's the reason. And not just fessing up that actually I just might like someone else. Yeah. So, A, what is wrong with people? Why can't they just take responsibility for their own feelings and emotions? And B, why has he not held his hand up and said, I've made a mistake here? But what I can't understand about it is he did that whole song and dance about asking oh, her know. to be his girlfriend, yeah, like, like each place in the villa. Yeah. And like, I feel so like great. Anna felt the same as your feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what the hell happened? And, then, like, and I get it, what we're seeing is a very edited mm -hmm. version of what happens throughout the whole day, but... 48 hours, really? I mean, can you change? Uh, 48 hours in the villa's like two oh, yeah. minutes. Like. <laughs> yeah. Look, the point is, though, well, A, Jordan, you're a fool because you'll now have no career, so shame on you. But B, Anna, like, how many girls have experienced this, do you think? You're literally led on to believe something, then dumped effectively, and then you're blamed. Like, it was you, and it had nothing to do with her. Yeah. And he also had to have the final say, because last yeah. night he was like, we're over. She was like... Yeah, yeah, I know. I gathered. Oh, yeah, you just had <laughs> awful. To have it. Yeah. And also, like, hold your hands up. And at least that's what Michael did. He kind of, yeah. in time, was like, I handled it wrong. It was my bad. I thought when Michael left, actually, it all left in a, a nice way, which I wasn't. He'll still be the pin for fireman everywhere. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. He Jordan, will. shame. Yeah. yeah. Jordan, you don't seem to be chipping in, but don't worry, because I get the sense you don't really watch it that much. I don't, but my daughter does, and I did hear them having the most almighty row with some pretty colourful language. Oh, yeah. 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 oh my God, mute! <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was the way that you, f you see that anger on TV with someone who, who just feels so um, let down and the way they then misrepresent themselves. I mean, I don't know enough about her to have seen how she is, no, whether she's I agree quite an angry you. person. But I just thought, has she been like that the whole way through? Or was this a, quite a change in her personality brought on by his actions? She does actually let herself down sometimes in arguments or whatever, because she even if her rupt. point is right, yeah, her yeah. execution is quite intense and almost gives him a platform to And then, repetitive. So she can't repetitive. just say it once. She has to keep yeah. saying the same thing. Yeah. Until but you know, she, she, had, like she didn't cry as much no. as I would have probably. So she did pretty well. But anyway, Georgina, what's great is it's coming back in the winter. <laughs> and yeah. it's so good to have can get in there from the beginning. You should. Yeah, there's I a winter should. edition. Yeah, yeah. Really? why not? <laughs> it's January, you won't be doing it anything else. Itself. <laughs> right. You're right, it does December. lend itself to winter viewing because you're committed every night, so at least you're in and it's cold. And this is winter in a hot destination. Yes, yeah, in South Africa. Oh, don't worry, that. they'll still be in their bikinis. Yes, yes. Okay. there's no you. getting out of that. And also you don't need to feel bad because you're in your cosies and with your hot chocolate anyway, so oh, whatever. I'm so yeah. thrilled. Yeah. I literally <laughs> can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> Do you think you'll watch it? it? Yeah, sure. I just view the winter as a good time to catch up on Netflix. But anyway, that's me. Right, the heat wave is well underway. Record-breaking temperatures hit in the UK this week, this very day, in fact. How are you coping? What are your coping mechanisms? Tell us all, because I am finding it hat. Heather? I'm enjoying the office air con, which I know usually not everyone's a fan of, but right now I think even the people who are usually shivering in the corner <laughs> yeah, are really pleased me. that it exists. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I've got a tiny little fan from Muji, which is small but powerful. It's uh, 15 pounds. It's my, usually my desk fan, but I took it home with me last night and plugged it into my laptop and just had it sort of... Oh, it's a USB one. ...breezing on That's me, exactly. And yeah, it's like 15 quid and it's way more powerful than other smaller ones I've used. 
Um, and then well, another thing I've never used until today was blotting. Oh, yeah. called blotting, blotting paper. paper. I feel like that's yeah. really old school. It's so old yeah. school. There was some lying around in the office <laughs> yeah, ages ago. Um, it's made by Tark Cosmetics. It's called Blot Party. And basically I got on the train because there's a massive hill at the end before I get on the train and just kind of blotted, blotted my face. And I was actually really impressed with the results because usually it kind of drips off. Yeah. Oh, so it doesn't take off your makeup? No, it, just it didn't. Kind it of just removes the... to, Yeah, and it's got like a sort of mattifying powder that it did absorbs, the job. I think. Oh. Exactly. Rather when you than took it away, it. you're like... I didn't look. Oh, I was yeah. just like... <laughs> I'm always terrified of those things for that yeah. reason. Did the job what, for me. What are you doing to stay at? Cool. Well, I thankfully sit right underneath the air conditioning, which for most of the year I'm <laughs> cursing because I have to arrive with sort of 10, ten jackets scarves. and scarves. <laughs> but today I'm very happy. But last night, it's just all about, for me, the through flow of air. So you've got to have windows open yeah. at the front and the back. And then although last night it was really still, but yeah. the night before... We did get a nice breeze. I'm not That's a fan nice. of. I'm not a fan of a fan on me at night. It, I just. I don't really. Yeah, like I that actually. Feeling. I get that, almost so. read an article about why that's so bad for you, and then opted not to because I was like, well, I'm going to yeah. need the fans. I'm yeah. just not going to read. I why find it's the bad. noise annoying, and I just. I don't really like the feeling of it. I feel like it's hard to fall asleep. Like I'm not tossing and turning. Yeah. And like oh, the covers are hot. All that. Mm. But once I, you are asleep. Hopefully, that's it. You're out. Well, last night Not I was just waking up. I don't <laughs> no. It was so hot. It was so still, wasn't it? And it just felt like... Oh. But I've been trying to have windows shut, curtains shut, yeah, everything exactly. shut in the day. Yeah. Keep, keep it dark. Keep and it cool. dark. And when it's this hot, it just, especially in London, it just doesn't seem to really be making much of a difference. And um, kind of on the sort of upstairs floor where the kids are, it's just really, really hot. So at night when they go to bed, I do stick the fan on them and I'm having to wipe them down with wet kind of face cloths. Oh, yeah. So oh, that they're all good, aren't you? I know, I'm not there all night. Oh, I'd love something to do. Have a nice cube. I'm like, here, have a face cloth yeah. to wash love on. Well, you could get like those Evian sprays or all those, yeah. you know, yeah. those like um, face sprays. I don't know what they are. What am I doing? How do you even dress in this weather? I yeah, mean, to be honest, I think thing. when you're at home, all bets are off. You just got to... But actually, you need a layer of, like, a cotton, don't you? But you don't want it to touch your skin. For me, you just want something that's, like... Baggy, but you, but if you're... It, don't sleep with nothing, because it's actually hotter. Yeah. You need a layer. Oh, is that right? Yeah, skin is actually worse, because you're, like, sweaty and clammy, but if you've got that kind of 100% natural yes. fibre thing. I think that's true. Try it tonight. Let us know. Oh, I will. <laughs> right, anyway, Instagram has released its third annual Instagram rich list based on internal and publicly available data. It has revealed the highest earning celebrities and influencers on the social media platform. They include celebrities, athletes, you know, fitness, beauty influencers and models. Number one this year, estimatedly, don't think that's word, <laughs> racking up. $1.26 million per post is Kylie Jenner. Now, she has 140 million followers. So can you therefore get your head around that number? To earn just, over a million dollars per post when you have 140 million followers. Kind of like per follower, it's like 30, 30 cents-ish. Yeah, except how relevant the followers are to what she's posting. It's right. just yeah. so wide, isn't it? It's kind but of, it's just madness. It's, it's just such large an enormous number. amount it's mind of boggling numbers. money for yeah. one square on Instagram. It just blows my mind. But yeah. surely if you're the, even a huge brand, like but that's a lot of money to spend on one person and get, I know they've got the reach, but like you say, how many of those people are actually going to purchase Would it influence something? you? Like if you saw, would you even follow Kylie Jenner, first of all? You're not one of the 140 mil? I'm not a big celebrity follower, follower okay. on Instagram. But so. if you did and she was posting a vase or something, I don't, would, would that influence you? Would that, do you think that would resonate? No, but I guess it must be with people somewhere, otherwise she Yeah, I guess probably it. a slightly younger crowd, isn't it? But yeah, they, they obviously have a huge impact, don't they? It's just crazy. And also, I think that the numbers probably have gone mad. But it's all a new phenomenon, so no one really knows. There's no rules. Or, I guess over 10 years, I'll know more what works and yeah. maybe rein it in. Meanwhile, all the others, the Kim Kardashians, Beyonce's, Justin Bieber's, they've all made the list too, so don't worry. They're not too hard done by it either. All right, well, that's all we have time for, ladies. Don't go away, though. I'm going to be back chatting skincare with a leading dermatologist next. 
are in Shoreditch at the In Addition showroom. And we're going to meet Anum Bashir. Hi guys, it's Anum from Desert Mannequin slash N Duo. Yeah. It has like that old meets new, boy meets girl appeal to it. This is our Gone with the Wind top. High neckline, I always find that very, very chic. Do you mind if I try it? Oh, oh there's <laughs> some killer shoulders on it. Fierce. Got an 80s trend report going this week. Oh my god, it's so amazing. It has a hanger appeal, but I think it's just. Oh yeah, funny. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Lou, yeah. what's your pick of the round? Only one. 2D2? Two, two. 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 Both of these. Okay. That is just the coolest print. I love the shape. I love the exaggerated sleeves. What's new with your beauty cabinet? It has been quite an influx of products. This is a brand new New Zealand brand. Ashley and Co. What got here? IGK. Oh, cheeky razor. IG, what just, oh, just back. This is their new antisocial overnight bond building dry hair mask. Mineral oil free, paraben and sulfate free, and it has UV protection too. Got an all in one there, guys. Low body stick, absolutely chunky. Either that. that's big or you're tiny. Yeah, you've been shrunk. Look at the size of it. Look yeah. Huge crap. It's Becca's new glow body stick. Well, it's got to be bigger for your body. Well, sorry. Yeah. Anna Coffin launched Needle and Thread in 2013 after spotting a gap in the market for contemporary feminine timeless pieces. I was always obsessed with sewing, embroidery, knitting, which I was never quite so good at. The Needle and Thread is a British disruptive brand in the contemporary sector. We offer very beautiful, very feminine, timeless products. This is one of my very favourites. So this has got tens and tens of metres of jewel in it. A little crosshatch in there. The design team developed all of this ruffle textile on the mannequins. It's absolutely beautiful. That's one of my Now we all know the skincare products that we should be using, whether it's cleanser to remove our makeup or a daily sunscreen to protect against those harmful UV rays. But what comes first and how do you apply them to make sure that you're really getting the benefits of all the products that you have invested in? Well, here to answer all those questions is Dr. Sam Bunting, founder of Dr. Scam Skincare Range, <laughs> a presenter on TLC's Extreme Beauty Disasters and a YouTube star in her own right. She made that top list, let me tell you. <laughs> um, right, talk to us, Dr. Sam. Tell us everything because, yes, what order do you put things on in and how much of everything do you need to actually make it worthwhile using these products? Okay, cool. Let's start with our morning routine, shall morning. we? All right, mornings have to go smoothly, right? The layering has to work. There's no time for pilling. I don't and know I, what pilling means, but you know, when it I don't pill, off. personally. <laughs> oh, right. oh yeah, when you you're all a bit like, pill. what is this? Exactly. Oh, is that what it's called? Yeah, when yeah, your face pilling too. when it rolls off. So I think everyone kind of needs a cleanse in the morning. So something gentle that's not going to deplete your barrier so you can actually use some active skincare because you want to get benefits. So I start off with a gentle cleanse. We formulated Flawless Cleanser to be super gentle but highly effective and a lovely jelly texture. So it's actually quite pleasurable despite being fragrance free. Um, and that really sets you up. You get rid of the oil and your skin is ready for a serum. So I like to use a serum, moisturizer, SPF, makeup. That's my serum, order of Serum, moisturizer, SPF, makeup. Yep. Um, serums, they yes. come in all forms of consistencies, textures, and what's inside them. Yep. So how do you know if you're using the right one? So I think the last point is the key one. So what's inside it is the ingredients matter. What the format is is less important. You could use a gel, a serum, just, you know, it's a chic little dropper thing. It's light textured, so it dries quickly, which is important if you kind of want to get out the door quickly. So I like vitamin C. If I live in a city, I exercise outdoors. It's an antioxidant that really helps protect against UV pollution, all that kind of stuff. And you stuff. use that daily? No yeah, stress. I use that every day, once a day in That's the morning. So that goes on to cleanse skin because you want penetration down into the dermis, all right? Mm, okay. So pigmentation prone skin, anyone who's concerned about anti-aging, great around the eyes and on the neck as well. Oh. So do take a right time to call it Taj, darling. I'm just Darling. Yeah, Let me you know. See how, how many drops would you use? I use seven for the face. Oh, right. And so I might don't use hold back. An extra five for my chest and neck. Okay, so you, it's not like two drops here. Oh, don't, God, be, no. don't be. No, if you're just doing around the eyes, I would do a couple that of drops. Nice. But you know, full face, um, let's really get the benefits from that. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. So now on to moisturizers. Even in this weather, do if you need a moisturizer? you need it, I think that becomes the optional bit in the sandwich because okay. I'm obsessional about using sunscreen every single day. Obviously today, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. But even in winter, sunscreen every damn day. So I like one that really sets you up for makeup application. It has a primer-like feel. And I think if you use the right sunscreen, you can build that habit is when you don't have the the one that you find it a problem. I guess people's perception of sunscreen is it's not um, in your skin care as in nourishing and giving your skin benefit other than protecting against rays. Are you saying you can get 
sunscreen that's also beneficial in other ways for your skin? Yeah, we formulated this to be like a serum in a sunscreen because it has 5% niacinamide, right. vitamin B3, an awesome ingredient for blemish prone skin. So it helps the sunscreen become less occlusive. Right. You know, so many people worry about breaking out with wearing SPF. Yeah, and it's like greasy and cloggy and Yeah, right. so okay. there's a lot of preconceptions about why it's not a fun product to use. So we set about making it the opposite fun. of what people worry uh -huh. about. Now, the key thing is the quantity and the way you apply it. And you'll say you're leading this up, <laughs> like you aren't using enough, so, I'm sure I'm not. I mean, you show me what you think. We made a point of writing on the back exactly how you use it because most brands don't tell you exactly what you need. I mean, that for me, for my face. Does that I seem would, a lot to you? I feel like if it covers it all like nicely and I feel like I'm not stretching it to get there, that's good. Shall I show you the, the bad news? Oh. All right. So, well, and why am I making it like, why is it negative to me? Like, because how do you even get that in? <laughs> That's a lot for one face. Yeah, you'll have to one wear little it. head. And it's not even the neck. So I didn't make the rule up. This is just the way sunscreen is <laughs> made. You just want to shift more product. No, 0.25 ml is your dose. It, and sunscreen is, is a medicine in a way. If you're thinking about something that's preventing aging um, and preventing skin cancer, as we know it does, um, you've got to get the dose right. So if you apply a pea-sized amount and think you're protected... You are mistaken. You are, because you're going to spend more time outdoors, you know, with this false sense of security. So I, I really believe in spelling out how you get the right amount of product to deliver the, the protection level fact. May I ask though, as in how do you even get that all to you be can. absorbed? You, you can. just so, keep going. So what you do is what I call the 13 dot technique. Now it seems so blooming obvious, but if you apply it, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, and then mix the rest in your hands, you will be surprised. You give it a few minutes to settle in, it, it works. Goes. And then you can blare up your make makeup as normal. And then you, I mean, this is designed to prime, so makeup sits beautifully on top of it. So Brilliant. it's really dewy and fresh finish, no cast, um, and so it won't clog your pores. So if you find the right one, you can make it a daily habit. Definitely. And the other really good news about sunscreen, even if you did nothing else in the anti-aging space, by protecting the skin properly, allows your skin to do its own anti-aging work. So Fine. you actually get better wrinkle improvement, brown spots, etc., just with sunscreen alone. So if you're going to invest in one thing for your skincare routine? Forget eye cream, it should be sunscreen every day. You heard it here first. All right, that's the morning. <laughs> then layer up your makeup. Are you tired now? Yeah, okay. now I'm exhausted, so now it's bedtime. I've exhausted you. Okay, so night time then. Um, you've got to get your sunscreen and your makeup off, so you go back to the cleanse again. I'm a big single cleanser. <gasps> okay, is that uh, breaking your religion? Um, you know what? If it's, a, if it's an effective cleanser, it, it will work. Um, use your fingertips, nothing rougher, because, you know, this is all precious. Um, and take your time. I instruct people to use a full minute, plenty of product, a little bit of breathing, a little bit of you know mindfulness. Mm, yeah, meditation and makeup when removal. When cleansing, or do a couple of squats, whatever you know, floats your boat. Um, get everything off, and then you're ready for your nighttime step. And for most people, the most effective way to use your nighttime is to use a retinoid. Okay. So vitamin A, yeah. Magic, really. Anti-aging, breakouts, pigmentation. I think unless you're pregnant or super, super sensitive, a retinoid is the way and to go for And why when you're pregnant nighttime. can't you use it just because of the sensitive, your, sensitive yeah, that thing of your skin? <laughs> no, it's because vitamin A is a signaling molecule in infants developing in the womb. So right. we don't use it in pregnancy. Um, and that's the one situation where you, you, know, you do not use it. But otherwise, um, a retinoid at night... I tend to use it on its own because it's a fragile molecule. Vitamin A is fragile. So you kind of don't want things you know, interfering with it and potentially neutralizing its effect. You have to start slow. You have to build up over time. And this is really a, you know, an ingredient where persistence and consistency are super, super important. All of that seems like you need to know a lot. The average skincare user won't know which potency, how often, all of that stuff. So where do you suggest someone finding out that info for themselves? We actually did a video series specifically on retinoids called the Retinoid Revelations um, on how to go about starting it, what kind of quantities to Fine. use, and that kind of slow approach, techniques for managing dryness at the beginning, buffering with moisturizer, using niacinamide, all these little tips that I've gleaned, I guess, over years of working in the clinic with patients. Well, then, so check it out. That's yeah. a useful tip. I'm going to sneeze, so just ignore me when I do. It's coming, <laughs> I feel it. Um, okay, so you've done your... 
Yeah. Uh, you've done your vitamin A. Yep. Now what? I would moisturize and okay. go to bed, basically. But that's it? Yeah. That's enough? I mean, yeah. I, you know, let's, let's multitask. I mean, Nightly Serum has multiple active ingredients in there anyway. So if you have any concern about how to combine actives, we put four in there so you don't have to worry about it. Great. Bacuchiol, niacinamide, azelaic acid, and grown active retinol. Can I try this? All in one. Of course you can. So it's gentle, but it's really multitasking, hard working for busy people who really don't have time to worry or investigate what ingredients go with That's what. That's lovely. That feels very Goes in lovely. super easily. Yeah. Simple layer of moisturizer. Because this hand's going to look like 10 years younger than this one. <laughs> um, oh, that's really done. lovely. Mm, smells nice too. Mm. Um, okay, so, and that's it. Well, that's, that's all I do. That's all you do? Mm. Gosh, it all seems so simple. <laughs> and now the body. Like, should we yeah. be worrying or concentrating or focusing or giving a bit more love to the body, not just the face? Chest, yes. I think, you know, hands, neck, chest, all should match. That's where the passport guys look. They don't get your face anymore. They look down here. Um, oh, so I think sun protection obviously is key. No one likes a speckled chest, I find. And I think with your sleeping habits, that's so important with the chest as well, just thinking about nighttime. If you scooch over and you do all this, that is part of why you get those unfortunate oh, creases gosh, on the so chest. Much to think about. Selfish starfish, please. Oh. <laughs> You've got to suffer for beauty and spreading your partners. I know, right? Okay, no cuddling. <laughs> You're going to get pillows that help you stabilize your position in oh bed my now. Goodness. I know. Wow. But um, daytime, I'm pretty simple. I mean, I, you know, sun protection if I'm outdoors, um, working out, running in the park, cycling, and so forth. In terms of day to day, I use a simple, non foaming um, cleanser for my body. I use an oil, which is actually quite pleasant. How much of that do you need per oh, shower? Well, two pumps, I think, is fine. Oh. Um, I go through quite a lot of this. So it's, it's pleasant. It doesn't have fragrance, which I'm, you know, I think try not to use fragrance where possible because it's just an irritant, but the texture is really luxurious. Go on then, I'll have mm. that. By okay, a and that's then? nice. And then gently pat dry, not too long and hot a shower because that does tend to dry you out. Oh, who doesn't have a lovely hot steamy shower yeah, to wash but we're the all day away? Washing so often, you know, you wash it, you shower in the morning and then you go to the gym in the evening and all of a sudden you're having 14 showers That's a week, lovely. right? It's good, isn't it? So and that will just rinse off yeah, nicely. Yeah, and no kind of greasy residue. And then to finish off a bit of a, a Van Zira Calm, which is a super pleasant balm so it's not sticky at this time of year particularly because who has time to you know you're wearing a silk shirt and you've got a sticky moisturizer all over the place you just you know it's game over you're not going to do it so that goes in really nicely um and if you are prone to dry itchy skin particularly on that's shins, me i get very itchy legs shaving i think really is a, a bit of a bore in terms of you know potentially making us a little bit dry and irritable on the shins so um yeah that's it and then a bit of fake tan oh always you know. layer up with some fake tan you know we love that here <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Dr. Sam. For more information on her, look at her website, drsambunting.com, or check out her YouTube channel. But don't go away. We are going to be back soon talking all things fish. Now, after a busy day at work, nothing is easier, healthier, tastier than a nice piece of white fish. But if you're looking for a bit of inspo, how you can jazz up your piece of cod or sea bass, then we have all the tips, because we're big fish eaters here. Who knew? 
Heather, let's start with you. What have you gone for and why? <laughs> uh, so I've gone for a one-pot wonder just to save on the washing up and, yeah, just Always. do something nice and quick when I get in from work. So I like to use haddock with this, but you can use any other white fish you like. Uh, so it's basically a rice dish. Mm. So um, I yeah. love rice. It is mm. good. It's my nice favourite part. Mm. Yeah, rice. Right. Yeah. It's good. But you can use, uh, like, brown or other ones. But basically, you just pop that in the, um, the one pot with um, 600 mils of water and you pop a couple of tablespoons of this green olive tapenade, mm. which is lovely. I prefer it to the black olive one, even though I do like olives, black olives as well. Or you can use pesto if you can't find any, it works just as well. Oh, yeah. So pop that in with the rice and then while- While it's cooking, right at the beginning. While it's cooking, right at the beginning. And then once the um, rice starts to boil, you then get your fish fillets and sort of pop them on top and press them into the, the rice and water. And then while you're waiting for the, uh, the rice to boil, you chop up your cherry tomatoes and pop some red wine vinegar and olive oil in just to kind of, I don't know, just to pickle it slightly, I suppose. And then once it's, you put the fish on, you then whack all the tomatoes on top with some of this basil put the lid on for 10 minutes and then the fish is cooked that's it oh, that's yeah. it and then you just put some that more... sounds very good on no prep exactly so you then just tear some more of this fresh stuff on top a few more spoons of the tapenade done it's really nice i would just like to say um you can get like olives in the oil and brine already yeah so you if could you make wanted your own. to add in olives, you've got all the pre-made exactly. oh, smush. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I do so like to, you can sometimes add extra olives as yeah. well. But yeah, if you just kind of mix it all together just before popping it on so everyone's plate. So do you break plate, the fish up? Yeah, it tends to kind of break up a little bit anyway. Yeah. I think you're yeah. meant to have a fillet per person, but it all kind of breaks Lakes up. up um, so how long do you nice. need to get the rice going first before you add the fish? Um, I, well, I cheat a bit because I always use boiling water yeah. with uh, my rice. So yeah, it's kind of already boiling when Great. it goes. And then yeah, it cooks in sort of 12 minutes. That is a very Yum. quick supper. Yeah. Very good, because you just once you've taken the lid off, you just leave it off for two minutes so the rest of the water evaporates and it's done. Sounds very it's easy very and wonderful. nice. It's Yum. sort of Mediterranean and tasty. Just yeah. to note, don't worry, you don't need to like have been scribbling down anything. Obviously, all the recipes and ingredients good will be linked below. Um, right, go on, what have you got? So mine is also really quick, and we have eaten this so much recently. It's really nice in the sun. It's just super easy. So I would grill the fish just with like a little bit of olive oil and salt and maybe a few capers on top. Mm. And then, this comes from a feature we did yesterday, but you're going to barbecue your lettuce. Food. Which is Ooh. craziness. What do you mean? Game changer. It's so good. If How long does it need to be on the barbie? Oh, like five minutes. Nothing. Even if that. You just cut it down the middle, drizzle it with a bit of oil and then just pop it face down and it chars yeah. and it goes really juicy, that. sprinkled with a bit of salt too and it's so lovely with the fish and then I'm a bit of a cheat but I love this rice. I've um, never seen that flavour, it's really good, such that a one. good flavour mm -hmm. but also really nice with brown rice too I think so it's quite nutty with the fish, it's really nice and then literally a squeeze of lemon and a few more capers, I, I love capers. I just need to, uh, yeah I was going to say capers I feel like, you like salt don't I, you? I, I love, love salt a caper. Sorry. I would always go salt over salt. Sweets, mm. savory tea. Anyway, um, you just fire up your barbie for a bit of lettuce for five minutes because we have a gas barbecue, so I guess that makes a difference. But I, I want you could probably do it on a griddle pan. Um, yeah, I'm sure that would be the I've done that. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a barbecue, so I've done it. But honestly, on that it makes a lettuce so mm. juicy. It's just, yeah. it's a different thing to do, and also quite nice if you're doing a dinner party. I think it kind looks, of looks a bit different. Yeah, yeah, where it's really easy. What fish is your fish of choice? I've done it with sea bass, but I mean any white. Any white fish. Why is do you good. go haddock over? I'm cold. from Grimsby and we catch haddock. So, so it's like your local. <laughs> exactly. It's your local line haddock fish. Girl, not cold. Fine, fair enough. Right, Georgina, what have you gone for? Lots of your ingredients look like a lot of mine. So we'll see if we're different <laughs> or similar. Well. So this is um, tray, ba tray roasted cod. So what's okay. great about this is a bit similar to yours. You just um, put everything in on the tray in the oven and it's done. That's and then easy. you can go off and do whatever else you need to do. So um, first of all, you, you get your garlic and your paprika and a bit of salt and pepper and you mix it all up. And one thing I would say is when you're crushing your garlic, you want it to be really fine. Um, so don't chop it, use a press. Yeah, because you're going to rub it over your mm -hmm. fish fillets and it stays there when you bake it. So otherwise you get kind of like big chunks of burnt garlic. So yeah. You need it quite fine. But otherwise, it's, um, you, you rub it over the fish and then you put your fish stock and... Um, the asparagus, the olives, in the baking tray, and then you put the what fish... What fish stock? 
the fish stock that... Do you buy a fish you stock? You buy your fish right, stock. Right, you haven't yes. like been cultivating this fish stock. No, I'm not boiling lobsters. Right, <laughs> 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 so you've got stock. your fish stock and you put that um, in the tray and then you nestle in um, the fish around the vegetables that are in there and then you just pop it in the oven. How long for? Uh, about 15, 20 minutes. Oh, that's that the beauty nice. of fish. Yeah. It's so quick. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yum. Yeah, and then I did it actually with some mash on the side because I gave it to my kids and they loved it. They absolutely loved really? it. Really? Yeah. Delicious. And the whole I thing actually love infused with the That's smell and then you put in some lemon and it's just, it's kind of all those fresh flavours. It's really good. It's very summery white fish. Yeah. I it's always so go, easy. I go down a very, um, I want to call it Italian, but who even knows? Let me tell you mine. <laughs> no, so I, I swear to God, this takes 20 minutes, not even. Basically, chop up garlic and onion, standard. That's how I cook any dish ever. Uh, in a pan with some olive oil. If you get the pitted black olives in olive oil, use that oil. It's yeah. better. And it's like, oh, you're using up all the stuff. Um, and basically make a tomato sauce. I always like chilli, so we always add chilli to everything, so I make it spicy, but you don't have to. Then just get it nicely cooked, I mean, what, five minutes? Whatever, so all the kind of tomatoes are broken down. Dump it in a kind of pot you can put in the oven, because my hob, I can't... You know, like, you can get those kind of pots that you can cook on and put oh, in the oven. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's an electro one. Oh, right, yeah. It's annoying. Anyway, it's more washing up, whatever. <laughs> Dump it in there, literally put the fish in... Oh, and sorry, add the olives to your sauce while you're cooking. Put the fish in, maybe a bit more like salt and pepper, a bit of whatever. Chuck it in the oven. It comes out this hot, bubbly, tomatoey, olivey, chilli deliciousness. Yeah. And then I have asparagus every night without fail because we love it. Uh, I love smelling my wee in the morning. So <laughs> it's a joke. But um, lay these out on a tray, olive oil, salt, rock salt and black pepper. Put them in the oven while you're cooking it. They come out crispy and salty and crunchy yeah. and just like crisps. <laughs> Amazing. And that is a quick supper on a Monday night. So no carbs? That's the only thing. Last night we had it and suddenly I was like, hang on a second. So I did do a bit of pasta for my husband on the side and obviously I had some too because I always claim like it's for him and then I have it. But yes, I do think it needs it. But if you want something light and there's enough fish and you have like sauce and mopping up things, that would also be enough. Yeah. Mm. That would make it very light. But you could literally do any Carbs. Even sometimes yeah. just a really lovely kind of rustic loaf. Exactly. So all yeah. that sauce yeah. and juice mm -hmm. you can then Because it's quite a thick nice. sauce by the end, so it's quite it lends itself oh, nice. to yeah. yeah. Actually that would be yum. A good sourdough or something mm. or a baguette. Ooh. I'm starving, that's all we have time <laughs> for today. Thank you so much to Dr. Sam Bunting, to the Sheer Lux ladies, of course, and thank you to you for watching. We're gonna be back next week with plenty more fashion, beauty, food, and all the other stuff to entertain you. In the meantime, have a lovely hot day and do comment, like, subscribe and of course tell your friends. Bye-bye.